Who has a question for our punter from down under? Nobody. Okay, let's go. We'll go to the far left to Robert Cessna from the Eagle. So I guess how tough was it? You didn't punt last week. A little bit nervous going out. You know, big big game. Colorado first punt obviously didn't affect you. But talk about going in with having not punted. Yeah, I mean, it was just a different type of ball game, I guess. So it's the same mentality, exact same thing, preparing to punt. Um, unfortunately, we, I mean, well, fortunately, we didn't get one the first week. And then, I mean, we ended up getting a few last game. But it was good to uh, get out there, get the nerves out. You know, first sort of first game for me, I guess, punting wise. So it was, you know, great to get that going and um, hopefully keep improving from there. Let's go over here to the right side to Cole and then Brent. Nick, when you were warming up in the altitude, did that affect any bit of your punting or any bit of your process going through it? It didn't affect the process. I mean, a few of the punts, you know, they would travel a bit further and higher. So you had to sort of adjust to where you were on the field and, you know, how, like how much you want to put into the punt. Um, but with regard to the process, no, it didn't. It was the exact same thing as what you do down in Caulfield compared to up in the altitude. And then a 65-yard boomer. I mean, how did that feel coming off your leg? No, it felt connected pretty well, I'd say. But, um, I mean, it was good at, at the right time of the game it happened, I guess. So it was good that we got to deliver it there and the cover team got down there in time, which was good. Um, but, you know, yeah, it was great to help the team in that, in that department. Friends Werman from the Chronicle. How important is it to have a decent snapper? It's very, very underrated, I'm going to say. Like, it is, Choate is, when you go out there, you want to try, especially as a specialist, you want to eliminate all forms of clutter. And not worrying about the snap is one of the biggest things a punter can ever have. So going out there with full confidence, knowing that the ball's going to come exactly where you want it, unbelievable. So Choate's unbelievable at that. How cool is it to have a 12th man, as a, oh, you, a snapper as a 12th man? You can't get much say. better than that, I'd say. <laughs> I'm saying, especially the way Choate is, his character is unbelievable. So I love seeing the number 12 on him. Let's go back to TV row to Mike from KAGS. Hey, Nick, you speak of confidence, and I know you're not in the offensive room, but what's the confidence of this team with Zach Calzada moving forward as quarterback? I think it's, um, Zach's got amazing arm talent. And I mean, as you saw towards the end of the game, when he got his composure, it was, he was unbelievable, made some massive plays. So I think for Zach, I mean, he's a very, very talented human being. And um, when he gets more game reps, I think it's un he'll be unstoppable. So I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table for sure. Stay at TV Row and go to Tyler from KPTX. When you have games on Saturday when, when the offense is struggling to score, how much pressure does that put on you? And just you know, how important is your job to you know to flip the field and just to keep the team in this? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot more emphasis placed on the on special teams when that happens. But with regards to the mindset, it's the exact same no matter what it is. If we're you know down it in the first half or up by 40, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's we've got the same goal. We've got to flip that field. And, you know, yeah, we've just got to continue, continue that process and make sure we uh, bring that each week. Go to right here in the middle to Olin from Texax and then Christy. Yeah, Nick, that was actually going to be my question, so let me ask it another way. Um, did you feel like or were you aware that, 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 that you could be a very important part of that game the way it was going? Yeah, for sure. I mean, at the end of the day, we'll, we're struggling offensively at the start and – Defense was doing really well, and it was all up to you know special teams as well to flip that field, allow, allow them to play on longer fields um, compared to us. So it is it is critical, and we all try and do the best we can in order to make that happen. I want to ask you one more thing. Um, I was watching another another game this week where the punter actually dropped the the ball, yep. the, the snap, and it ended up resulting in a touchdown for them. Is, it, is anything like that ever happened to you where you just drop the, the snap? And uh, is it hard to catch the fortunately, snap? Yeah, fortunately, not not in like game or practice yet. But I mean, it, that, that just comes down to being lackadaisical with, with you know, your concentration. So if you just stay locked in, you know, that's, that's the end. You've got to stay locked in at all times. And stuff like that, you don't want to see it happen, but it can happen. And um, it's one of those things, you know, the split, you know, the split second you take your mind off what you're supposed to be doing, that's when that, that's when that happens. So... Yeah, it, it always keeps me, you know, making sure that I keep my mind locked in. So, yeah. Let's go to the left side to Christy from the Associated Press. Uh, with more players um, that are that have grown up outside the United States playing college football these days, do you think it could help kind of increase the um, popularity or the eyes on college football for uh, internationally? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, even even now, like Australia, a lot of Australians love watching college ball. You know, the atmosphere that's there. We. We get shocked by the like even our student section here. You know, what I'm saying having you know thirty, forty thousand people, whatever it is, it's just unbelievable. And we, you know, some games in Australia max out their stadiums at fifty thousand, and we've got a student section of that. So 
you know, it's it's unbelievable. And yeah, the more Australians that are coming up, it's really opening eyes. You know, their families are watching it, and just word of mouth. So it's definitely increasing the numbers of people that are watching back at home. Let's go back to TV Road to Mike from KAGS. Nick, we've had two special teamers, so I just got to ask this question. Yeah. But do as a special teams unit and as someone who specializes in, in punting and Connor with snapping, I guess take offense when people, you know, just talk about offense and defense and maybe not give special teams the love it, it probably <laughs> deserves? Uh, it doesn't really throw us off too much, to be honest. We, we joke about it here and there, just like, oh, you know, we should be getting more, you know, more people talking about us, but it's we don't really take it to heart, to be honest with you. We know what our role is. The team understands how important we are, so we just we have the main aim of going out there and doing what we do each week. Are we going to follow up, Olin? That's yes, oh, coming. Mike's coming. I just wanted to ask you, uh, who, who would be the best known Australian football player? Best known Australian football player? Oh, Lance Franklin. His name is, and he's a he's like a forward. Are you talking about like with regards to AFL, or, or, or Australians that are playing football in the United States? Jeez, I'm not I'm not too sure about that. To be honest. Yes, yeah, I know there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I don't I don't know who the best is. We got a, there's a lot of talent out there, so I can't really put a name to that. To be honest, I'm sorry. Maybe we'll, we'll try and work that one out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got one more follow in the back. Tyler from KBTX. Nick, is, does the preparation change at all when you've got kicks, uh, kickoffs at like 11 o'clock, uh, like this Saturday, where you got earlies? Is it any harder to, to kind of get pumped up for? Um, personally, not really, because I'm, I'm an early person, so I'm already awake by like, you know, 4 or 5 a.m. So for me, that's not too bad. But you just, it, for, for mental prep, it is a little bit different with regards to, you know, you have to lock in a lot earlier. But the prep that we do, you know, the, Two days before, especially, stays the exact same. It's just you have to wake up a little bit earlier and, you know, you get ready for an 11 o'clock game. So it doesn't really make too much of a difference. We'll be ready to go and locked in. All right. I think that's all the questions we have for you. Thank you.